we're, we're going to look into the book of Hebrews. Book of Hebrews. <laughs> and um, we'll start reading at Hebrews chapter 11 at verse 30. And it says in verse 30, By faith the walls of Jericho fell down, and they were encircled for seven days. By faith, the harlot, harlot Rahab did not perish with those who did not believe when she had received the spies with peace. And what more shall I say? For the time would fail me to tell of Gideon and Barak and Samson and Jephthah, also of David and Samuel and all the prophets who through faith subdued kingdoms, worked righteousness, obtained promises, stopped the mouth of lions, quenched the violence of fire, escaped the edge of the sword, out of weakness were made strong, became valiant in battle, turned to fight the armies of their aliens. Women received their dead, raised to life again, Others were tortured, not accepting deliverance, that they might obtain a better resurrection. Still others had trial of mockings and scourgings, yes, and of chains and imprisonment. They were stoned, they were sawn in two, were trampled, were slain with the sword. They wandered about in sheepskins and goatskins, being destitute, afflicted, tormented, of whom the world was not worthy. They wandered in deserts, in mountains, in dens and caves of the earth. And all these, having obtained a good testimony through faith, did not receive the promise. God having provided something better for us, that they should not be made perfect apart from us. Chapter 12. Therefore, we also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witness, let us lay aside every weight uh, and the sin which so easily ensnares us, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who, for the joy that was set before him, endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. And may God add a blessing to the reading of his word this morning. And you know that the Hayden um, Planetorium in New York City ran an advert asking who would like to go to another planet. <laughs> Do you ever think that some days? Lord, I'd just love to pack my bags and go to another planet. <laughs> just sounds so idyllic. And so the, the Hayden Planetorium um, sent out these invites, who wants to go? And in a few days they had over 18,000 people who had applied and so they took those 18,000 applications and gave them to a group of psychologists. And the psychologists found the number one reason why people wanted to leave planet Earth and go to another planet was, be, was because they were discouraged by the life on this planet. Interestingly, Elon Musk's research shows that 45% of 18 to 35 year olds would like to live on Mars. <coughs> Discouragement. It will always make us want to be somewhere else. I don't know if you find that. You get discouraged about something here and you can start thinking, I want to be over here. You know, discouragement, it, it, it's horrid. The, pre the Baptist preacher, C.H. Spurgeon, struggled with discouragement. 
He said, discouragement creeps over my heart and makes me go with heaviness to work. It's a dreadful <laughs> weakening. Discouragement weakens us. Because discouragement, it stops us from moving forward and being effective for the Lord. And the author of Hebrews gives us some encouragement this morning with this illustration in chapter 12, verse 1. Since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witness, the author here pictures the champions of faith as spectators in heaven watching and cheering us on to overcome. Discourage, to overcome discouragement in an athletic competition. The author was thinking of more than 11 men of faith mentioned in chapter 11, cheering you on. But the author is thinking of all the saints in glory, cheering you on. The great cloud of witness is from the believers who have gone on to the glory before us. And their faith, and their endurance, their witness, their, their faith and their endurance, it witnesses to us. It encourages us, as we read there briefly in chapter 11. The Greek word translated here, cloud, was a figure of speech for a group, the great group of witness, the great cloud of witness. This illustration here, it gives us encouragement to keep pressing on. When you think of the believers, their witness, their testimony cheering us on, maybe Christian parents, Christian grandparents, our Christian ancestors cheering you on. Now, I was, you know, read, I was reading just recently, uh, last week I finished the book about a Zulu Baptist pastor, w William Duma. And uh, didn't have much of an education, but he had an anointing from God. And when you read his testimony, when you read the ministry there, it is a witness that encourages us to go on. You could imagine the previous ministers of this church, their testimony, their witness, encouraging us on. Some of us may remember Mr. Balsam. Neither on land nor air, but in the middle of the ocean, I accepted Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. And then he would go into song and proclaim his testimony. So this cloud, their witness and what they have done, it encourages us. But then also in heaven, we have the angelic hosts of heaven and they watch us. They listen to us. They know what's going on. Ephesians 3, 10 to 11 says, To the intent that now the manifold wisdom of God might be made known by the church, by us, to the principalities and powers in the heavenly places, according to the eternal purpose which he accomplished in Christ Jesus our Lord. Principalities and powers are angels of various rank, and they are learning about God's grace in your life because we're the body, we're the church, and we have received the gospel that has changed us. God in his wisdom saves you by grace to not only save you, but to teach principalities and powers. 1 Peter 1 verse 12 says, teaches us that angels desire to look into the gospel. True 
angels of the mighty God desire to look into the gospel. Counterfeit angels will always take you away from the gospel and take you down another path. True angels of God, they want to see the wisdom of God at work. The preach, how the preaching of the gospel has saved us. How it brought us to our knees in, in repentance. And grace came in. And mercy came in. A mercy that is voluntary from God. The angels must be in awe. As they see the work of the Son of God. Saving a fallen humanity. Whilst the angels that rebelled in heaven are predestined for the lake of fire. We see here in verse 1, we are to lay aside every weight and the sin. And sins can hold us back. But there may be weights that are not sin that are holding us back. In verse 1, sin which so easily ensnares us is a difficult verse in the Greek to translate, but it means, it can mean these four things. Some sins can be easily avoided, but are not. Some sins are admired, but they must be laid aside. Some sins are ensnaring. And are essentially harmful. Some sins are more dangerous than others. And as Christians we must cast them off. As Christians we must ask for the power of the Holy Spirit. To set us free from the weights and from the sins that would seriously hinder our walk with the Lord. And would encircle us to entrap us. So step away from the sin. Step away from the weights. And the weights can be distractions that keep us from the Lord. You can give your time and effort to a lot of good things. But if the Lord is not in it, or Jesus wants you somewhere else, it's a distraction from what you are called to do. Not all social media is sinful, but it can be a massive distraction that keeps you from growing, that keeps you from the scriptures, that keeps you from prayer, that keeps you from moving forward in the Lord. It's incredible how many distractions can come in. I was... Uh, how can I put it? I think it, it was this week. And there I am. And I'm suddenly away. The Holy Spirit wants to say something to my spirit. So I thought, oh, okay, great. So I go into my study. And I start to pray. And I'm like, Lord, what are you wanting to say? Immediately, the phone starts ringing. <laughs> and I go, I can answer that in a minute. And so I got back, right? Started to focus on prayer. Hello, Matt, I'm home. <laughs> Beth comes in. I go, well, I can't ignore Beth. <laughs> yeah, sorry, Lord. And she would, you know, she's like a speeding bullet through the house. And she's in and she's straight back out again on a mission. So that was good. Okay, Lord, I'm back. I said, Lord, what do you want to say to me? On the door, it's the postman now. <laughs> Lord, you must really want to say something with all these distractions coming. And uh, get back again. Lord, what do you want to say? And there's this, it's the dog trying to get my attention. So, Lord, Bex, let's pray together. <laughs> Me and the dog are praying. Went to a specific verse and it just really, and I'm like, Lord, I don't know why I, I'm supposed to have this verse. Lord, what does this mean? The Holy Spirit saying it's really significant. And then we had that, after that time, and then almost a couple minutes later, I had a text message from somebody. I knew that verse was exactly for them. So I fired the verse off there in the north of England somewhere. 
And <clears throat> they message back. That's the verse the Lord has just given me for my situation. And that verse of promise will, is, is giving me strength to stay in my family and strength and courage to know that God is going to turn the whole situation around in my family. But the thing is, if I had allowed distraction to come in, I would have missed the blessing of the Holy Spirit and what he was saying. So we must be careful not to get sidetracked. And we've got to be, Lord, so many distractions coming, you must really want to say something. What is it? So let us be attentive to what the Lord says and lay aside the distractions so we are free to run with endurance the race that is set before us. Endurance is needed to run the race. Endurance means determination. It means I'm getting out of bed and I am seeking the Lord. It means the first person I speak to as soon as I get out of bed is the Lord. Lord Jesus, here I am. What are we doing today? It's determination here. Endurance refuses to be deflected. Nothing will knock me off course. I am keeping focused on the Lord. I'm running the race. I'm going to endure. Endurance is a steadfastness, especially when God enables the believer to remain under the challenges. We face challenges and God empowers and anoints us to keep on enduring in the challenge. And as God, because God in that challenge, he's shaping our character. And as he shapes our character and purifies us in it, then we can walk in more of his spirit, in his anointing and grace. Paul said in Acts 20, 24, I may finish my race with joy, and the ministry which I received from the Lord Jesus to testify to the gospel of the grace of God. Paul here in Acts 20:24, 20, he's pictured as a runner who had to finish the race. And nothing would keep Paul from finishing that race with joy. Paul said, <coughs> Paul said, my race. Paul had a race to run. We've all got races to run. You have your race to run in the Lord. Your race, we, we, we're, we're following the same Jesus, but he's got a different ministry. He's got different things for you to do. And we run that race, that marathon, and we're going to complete it with joy. And that only happens when we endure and we keep on going. The, the, the word race here in the Greek was also used to mean conflict or struggle of many kinds. It was a favorite word of the Apostle Paul. We have the witness and testimony of the saints cheering us on all around us. We are encouraged to cast off the sin and waste so we can overcome the conflicts and the struggles and run the race finishing joyfully. How glorious it must be when you reach that final point and in the next couple of seconds, you know in your spirit that you're going to go to be with the Lord. You know you've run that race. You've done everything the Lord has wanted you to do. And now it's, it's like time to come on home. <coughs> the joy in the, those final minutes in your spirit as you're here one minute 
one second and in the glory the next. And you've been taken there by the angels of God. Who desire to know the power of the gospel that has changed you. Who have seen the work of grace in your life. And they are sent out and they carry you home. Verse 2. Jesus He's our ultimate example. Look unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Jesus is our example of running the race. We can only run the race as we look to Jesus and have our eyes locked on him. No weight, no distraction. <clears throat> Looking unto Jesus, our focus, our inspiration, our example, our guide, our light, our joy. Don't look at the race course. You'll get discouraged. Don't look at the competitors, you'll get discouraged. But look unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. Because he who has begun a good work in you will, will, will complete it unto the day of Jesus Christ. Philippians 1 says, If we are discouraged Christians, lay hold of these verses. And rise up looking to Jesus and run your race. Jesus knows the cross here is going to be difficult. He knows it's going to be painful. But he could look beyond the horror to, in, to enjoy the joy beyond the suffering of the cross. Knowing that beyond the struggles... Beyond the conflict, there is joy. And this encourages us to endure and to press on. Because the struggles and the conflict, the pain and the suffering, it can be difficult. But there is joy that is yet to come. There is a reward that is to be had. Jesus could endure the cross because he knew the good that would come from it. The joy of seeing a redeemed, rescued people honouring and worshipping his Father for all of eternity. Jesus saw the salvation that would flow from his agonising experience. Jesus was able to enjoy and win the victory. He despised the shame and the terror shame can bring. But he endures the shame. He keeps on loving us. Despite his circumstance, Jesus does not let shame win. He does not let shame hide him away. He's there in full public view. Jesus conquered the cross of death. He sits down at the right hand of God the Father. And that speaks of Jesus' glorification. He went through the shameful mocking, the beating, the being stripped naked, being spat upon, a crown of thorns pushed into his head. He went through the injustice, the unjust trial. He goes through so much more, and yet he endured, and now he is glorified. Jesus is our example of running the race of sufferings, of conflict, of struggles. He bears the punishment for our sins and he triumphs over them. He won the race and he knew the joy that was set before <coughs> him. The delight when you come through the difficulty. May we enter into the joy of the Lord and know that blessing of knowing Jesus. May we dedicate our whole life to following Jesus 
heroically, with courage, courageously overcoming struggles and conflicts of the race that is set before us. The psalmist said, I'll be finished in a second. The psalmist said in Psalm 30 verse 5, For his anger is but for a moment. His favour is for life. God's favour is for life on you. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Do not be discouraged. Keep pressing on. And you will overcome. We're being cheered on. We have such, such an incredible God whose favour rests on us for life. And just, just as a footnote, when you're in discouragement, discern where is this coming from. Do I need to rest my body? Am I discouraged because I'm fatigued and I'm worn out and I'm emotionally spent? Do I, am I discouraged because I need to reorganise my life? Because I've got so much to do and so many unfinished problems. And when you're feeling discouraged, remember God will help you. He steps in. His burden is light and he leads us. And sometimes when we deal with discouragement, we have to resist. We have to fight back. Does the discouragement come from fear? Does it come from negative words? Why we look to Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith, who is our example of running the race. And of course, Jesus he can run the race because the Holy Spirit has descended on it. Like a dove, the Holy Spirit has anointed Jesus. And in our, our little worlds, may the Holy Spirit break in and anoint each one of us so that we may endure, so we may run well for the glory of Jesus as his grace is active and evident in our lives. Amen.